Welcome back to another video on hyperparameter tuning. In this video, we're going to introduce random search. We'll continue off of the last video and talk about how random search makes up for some of the downfalls of grid search. Then we'll walk through how to use scikit-learn random search CV module, as well as how to implement it manually. If you haven't watched the video on grid search CV, I'd highly recommend you checking that out first if you're interested in the details of the scoring and CV parameter in these two search modules. A random search, like a grid search, searches for the set of hyperparameters from a given search base that optimizes a predefined loss function. But unlike grid search, random search will only utilize some random initialization of parameter values within the range you define. Say we're tuning for the same three hyperparameters, the number of estimators, max features, and min sample split in a random forest. We would set a reasonable range for all three parameters respectively, and the random search algorithm will randomly pick values in the corresponding ranges. We can also specify a distribution in this range. For example, if we choose the uniform distribution within the range, the algorithm is going to pick any value within this range with equal probability. The idea is that we don't have to search for parameter combinations so close to each other in space. And if we allow for some randomness in picking a point in the search range, we're likely to encounter a relatively good result without going over the entire space like a grid. Additionally, our search space is not limited by the lines on the grid. Now, there are some very sophisticated theories behind why random search is generally more efficient than grid search, as analyzed in a paper by Bergstra and Bengio. I'll leave a link to the paper below if you're interested for a more rigorous explanation, both theoretically and empirically. From a practical standpoint, I would say each problem is different because of their innate loss function distributions. So you can probably tell which one is better by simply running them for a small number of iterations and compare. Inputs to a random search CV is very similar to that of grid search CV, except now we want to pass in a value an iter. This is the number of times a random parameter combination is chosen to be evaluated. For each iteration, the algorithm is going to randomly select a set of parameter combination to initialize the model, train the model, and evaluate the result based on the chosen metric. An iter is defaulted to 10, but in many cases with larger ranges in the search space, we we'll want to run more iterations. We'll again look at how it works with the simplest example that sklearn provides. So here I'm just copy and pasting the example from Raven Search CV documentation page. First, we're going to import the libraries and IRS dataset directly from the scikit-learn datasets. Then for a model, they're using logistic regression. The two parameters that we'll tune for in this example is C, where C is a regularization term, and a penalty type either L1 or L2. And we'll define the search space so that we randomly select a value for C between 0 and 4 with a uniform distribution. And for the penalty, we'll randomly choose one between L1 and L2. Again, we don't have to understand what these parameters mean to understand this example, because the parameters in search space are going to be specific to the model you choose that suits your problem. Then we'll define a random search CV, passing our model, the parameter distribution, and here I'm setting n iter to 5 and CV to 5. Then we can fit the data. The CV results will come out looking something like this, which is very similar to the results of a grid search CV, so I won't go into too much details here. We first look at the params. These shows us all the combinations of hyperparameters that the random search picked, as well as the order of which they're used. Notice that we have C between 0 and 4, and penalty either L1 or L2. The split test scores 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4 are the respective scores of each fold as the cross-validation test set. And as a summary, we'll also get the mean test score, which will just take the average of different test groups. To manually implement a random search CV, we can in fact just take what we had with the manually implemented grid search from the last video and modify that slightly. So I'll start by putting the data into a pandas data frame and prepare an empty CV result dictionary. This time the params will start with nothing in the list instead of a fully initialized combination. So the only difference between a manual implementation of random search and a grid search is that the number of iterations a grid search runs is determined by the number of parameter combinations in the search space, whereas the number of iterations in a random search can be set by us. So instead of looping through each of the possible parameter combinations, we'll let this run for, say, 20 iterations. And in each iteration, 
We'll pick a random value between 0 and 4 using a uniform distribution as our random C value and randomly select either L1 or L2 as the penalty. Since the parameter combinations are not predetermined, we'll initialize the CV result dictionary with an empty parameter list and fill this list while the loop executes. The result of this loop is a filled up version of the CV result dictionary which provides the same information as the RAM search CV module, but with more room for customization. As we can see, if we were to use the grid search with the search range, first of all, the search space cannot be a continuous distribution, as that will lead to an infinite number of parameter combinations. But even if we select, say, 100 possible values within 0 to 4 as a candidate value, that will give us 200 possible parameter combinations, and the number of iterations will blow up very quickly with more parameters to tune. However, with a random search, we can always keep this 20 as the set number of iterations, regardless of the range of our search space. The problem with both types of tuning methods is that neither uses information gained from previous iterations to help the succeeding tuning process. Let's take the example of a random forest again, and say our search range for the number of estimators includes the number 10. We soon find out that every parameter combination with an estimator close to 10 gives a bad result. So this tells us that we might want to only search for combinations with a higher number of n estimators. However, with grid search, the algorithm will still take 10 as a candidate for n estimators and run every combination with 10 estimators. And with random search, the algorithm is still going to randomly try out values around 10 with the same initial probabilities because both of them have no way of knowing this parameter value generally doesn't do well with the problem at hand. This means they're doomed to lack efficiency in some way. And this is what genetic-based search algorithms and Bayesian-based search algorithms tries to combat. In the next few videos, we'll introduce the genetic-based search algorithm and implement it with a simple example. If you're interested, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.